te tai toke ra Northland Papa Collaboration Kia ora. Welcome to the Collaboration Tai Tokido series. Ko Claudia Lyons toku ingoa no Scotland me Ireland o kutupuna. Ki te oho au ki whangarei. I am proud to live and work in Tai Tokido and I'm part of the Collaboration Tai Tokido initiative. For today's episode, I'm chatting with my friend and colleague Dana Carver, who facilitated the Collaboration Tai Tokido design sessions, which created the CTT strategy. You'll hear how a diverse group of Taitokido farmers and growers found common ground and how this group is driving our region in the direction they want to see. You'll hear about CTT's three projects, shared values, and listen through to the end to find out how you can get involved, no matter how much you feel you have to contribute. So let's get into it. Oh, thanks, Claudia. First thing I'm keen for us to kind of talk about is, you know, the kind of the journey that CTT has been on where we had this initial vision of three projects running concurrently and to where we are now, which is kind of that much bigger vision. You've kind of overseen that kind of journey and metamorphosis of of the CTT initiative. So I'm kind of keen for people to hear from from you what that journey has been like. Oh, well, I guess um, just kind of winding back to how I got involved. So um, basically, a lot of what I do in my day job is strategy facilitation, which is basically getting a group of people to come together to achieve an outcome. And usually that requires two high level things. So organic interactions and connections um, where all the good ideas come um, and then a logical plan on how to get there. And I guess when you brought me on board, I felt that I was quite impressed really with how many organic interactions and how many hui had been held and the number of different sectors and people that were interested. Um, I guess I saw my job is how do I bring that all together into something that's functional and um, so at Scarlatti, we use logic models as um, kind of a process and an output. So it's a process to get really clear on what you're trying to achieve and then get really clear on the short, medium, long term outcomes. Um, and then what are you actually going to have to do to get there? You know, we worked at that first hui just to figure out. Where are the themes of interest with the producers? Where are the places where they want to see some gains and they would be excited to work in? And we actually came up with four mm. at the first at the first tui. Um, and at that point, you know, you're still you're just blue sky thinking um, in getting all, you know, starting to funnel those organic thoughts and connections into workable themes. Um, but then from there. That's when we had the action hui after. Okay, so we've got these themes. Um, how are we actually going to make, um, or I don't know, just, just have some clear outcomes and outputs. And that's when we started bringing the logic model in. Um, and I guess the pivotal moment for me cause was that when I asked them what they were trying to achieve, the ultimate impact, it was the same for all of them, which is not surprising, um, which is based that Te Tai Tokoro's food, fiber, and beverage industries and communities are resilient, prosperous, and thriving. So it was just really clear that the top of the logic model was the same for all of them. Um, and then even when we got down into the long-term outcomes, um, it, they were still the same. So, you know, great businesses are becoming exceptional businesses and primary production is a sustainable source of well-being for Te Tai Tokoro. Um, so and this it just started to kind of form a macro picture at that stage. Did it surprise you? So at that, you know, the first collaboration hui, we had 40 something producers represented there across a whole bunch of sectors. So everyone's kind of living in their own lane. Did it surprise you that within a couple of hours we were able to pretty clearly articulate the areas of collaborative interest in, in such a diverse group? <laughs> no, but that's only because I do this all the time and it's my job to yeah. get in there. Um, so it probably would have worried me if we didn't get there. I think what surprised me, though, was the um, the variety or the scope of sectors in the room. It's rare that you get that. So it does make it a little bit more challenging. So um, I wasn't surprised that we got there at all. Um, but I, you know, you did have to do some work at beginning to really see that our challenges were the same. Um, yeah. So it did take a little bit longer and that you needed to give those couple hours of, you know, what do we do and where do we see our challenges before you could dive into this? But honestly, the minute you all realize that you've got these common goals, you usually do 
kind of fly forward. Yeah, but I think there's like a big I a big barrier, a big, big misconception that you can't get a group of people that come from really different day jobs and worlds together to work on the same thing. Yeah, and I mean, it really, it, I guess there is a, a perception out there that that's hard to do. But, you know, like I said before, it really isn't that hard to do to find commonalities. What people often don't do is take the time to do it first. So kind of going back to those two things, you've got to have those organic discussions and connections, but you've also got to have a plan. And most you know, groups of people are too heavy on one. They're not getting that balance. So they might do yeah. a lot of the connecting and then they don't get that that logical kind of pathway of how they're going to do it. And then they lose interest. They feel like it's just a talk fest. Um, yeah. and, and then on the other hand, some people just jump straight into the plan and they never take time to find this commonality. So I just, uh, I, I, yeah, it is a, a misconception that you can't bring a bunch of different people together to a common goal. It's just, you got to have that balance. So that, Macro strategy, the logic model. Um, can you talk a little bit around logic models and how should people approach the CTT macro strategy logic model to really understand and, and um, extract value out of it? I think when you first look at it, you can see a bunch of words, but it, once you actually just read it, it actually it makes clear sense. And I don't think people struggle with it once they read it. It's just when they first look at it, I think they immediately think it's going to be overwhelming. That I think the particular focus um, on the logic model is those three projects. I think that's where it gets really special. The co-papa that we've set forth with each of those three is no small undertaking, but maybe you can talk a little bit about around the projects, the three projects themselves, the long-term outcomes, you know, let's get into, let's jump into it. Let's go for it. Yeah. Well, if we jump into it and um, um, when you look at it, you, you'll just notice that the top, like anything in gray on the logic model are is shared between all up to the three projects. So they all have the same long-term outcome and impact, which I was referring to before. And then if you look at the grays at the bottom of it, they're all going to require um, a collaborative net network, um, collated research and stock takes, you know, to inform the actions. There has to be a communication plan behind, but between all the stakeholders. And there has to be a um, a new kind of resource model that, that provides funding and resources and logistics, but also allows for that freedom of collaboration. So it doesn't matter what the three projects are. They all need to have that. So I think that's the first point is anything in gray is either feeding into or coming out of all the projects. doesn't matter what they are. Mm -hmm. um, but if you jump into what the three projects are um, and they're in the, the three different, the yellow, blue and green columns. Um, but, but basically what we've got are we want Titokoro food, fiber and beverage industries to be workplaces of choice. So that's our first real um, kind of, I don't want to say isolated, but specific focused outcome and or project. So the second one is that Titokoro food and beverage products and experiences are in demand. So people are actually wanting this experience. Um, and Titokoro is optimizing its land use is the third one. So that's pretty clear, I think. Um, but mm -hmm. how are you going to get there? And so it's about breaking it down. Um, into those medium-term outcomes, short-term outcomes, and then what are our very first things we have to create? Yeah, I think the the process that we went on with kind of creating and then refining these was pretty awesome as well. You know, especially with that workplaces of choice. The initial conversation around that one was really around the workforce, and I will never forget this this the kind of switch that happened in the action we around that. We were yep. so focused on how do we get a workforce that's better? How do we improve or, you know, how do we change the people coming into things? And it was this whole idea of, well, actually, some of the responsibility needs to be on us creating workplaces where people want to come. And if people are different and there is intergenerational differences of values and attitudes towards employment, actually what's within our control and it kind of shifted the narrative like from what workforce was asked, yeah to, to work workplace place. and it created yeah. this kind of sense of empowerment within the, the room where we had all these employers there and it, yeah I don't know it was it was a really special moment for me 
Yeah, absolutely. I remember that moment too. Um, or yeah, it was taking that focus off of the employee. Then we shifted it for a moment to the employer, and then we realized that the two of them are their own unit, which is the workplace. Yeah, and it, and it was every, it was that feeling when you got there, everyone knew we were there. That's it. We want to be workplaces mm. of choice. Um, but it did mean that it was bringing the responsibility into um, yeah, that higher level. But we had that moment as well with the food and beverage products and experiences being in demand. Um, Mm. Because if you remember, it was a lot about the, you know, the brand, but then that, remember it kept the scope kept widening and it started to be that we were talking about Northland in general. And this is what you can often see is that people forget. And this is where the logic was so good is remember, this is actually about food and beverage products and experiences. And next thing you knew, we'd gone into all of Northland, which is actually (laughs) other organizations, not not ours. Yeah. (laughs) But if you don't have these, these things on the screen in front of people to pull them back, it's so easy to like walk out of a meeting and you've, you've got out of scope. And actually, now that we're talking about it, we had it with the land use project area as well, because we had it that it was about Kaitokido leading Aotearoa. And, you know, we want to be the best within within the nation. And actually, we had that conversation where, um, was it about being the best? Was, Was it about getting the gold medal for leading optimization of land use? Or was it actually within our own context, within our own systems, we're optimizing to the best of our ability. And it's not about beating anybody else. It's just about doing the best that we can for ourselves. And again, that really brought it into more of like a community-based thinking of it's not about doing better than anyone else. And that's, yeah, we've had those kind of moments throughout, throughout the project's development. So I think it is important to point out that this final macro strategy and, and even saying final, I hesitate because things will evolve and, and, and there's probably never a final, but that this is probably like the ninth iteration um, of the wording and, 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 you know, co-designed by what, over 30 people. So that's pretty cool. But, you know, if you think about how long we've actually been engaging with people on developing this and that kind of deep varied engagement is what's led us to being like nope that's you know that's actually not right that doesn't sit with our values you know that kind of stuff so it's been it's been a real journey so yeah so we've got those three projects but i think it's it's those outputs that are really important um is that creating those effective strategies for how we're actually going to um create these productive and flexible workplaces how we're going to get this suite of stories to show our brand and um, how we've got to create an integrated platform of land op- optimization options. So I think that's when it starts to get exciting for me because I can picture how you would do those three things. I guess also the bit we haven't talked about is the values and the principles. So it's also how you do these things because if you do these things in the wrong way, they can they can basically peter out. You've mentioned the values, a real special part and a real uh, opportunity for us to capture the identity of CTT, but also those who are contributing and shaping CTT. So, like, is this common for people to kind of capture values in in the logic model? Um, you know, why do you think that the value articulation is so important to CTT? I mean, I think it's important anywhere, but it's not common. Probably twenty percent of them have have them. Um, Mm -hmm. But I suppose, so once again, remember, you've got the balance between the organic connections and discussions and the logical plan. The values actually come out of the organic discussions. It's, it's, It's figuring out who you are. So once you know who your commonalities are, is how you want to work and how you think you can succeed. And it's a really important part. But it often doesn't get enough time. But the one thing about values or principles um, is you don't want to force them or just have like naff words that mean nothing to anyone. That's actually not worth it. So most people don't spend 10 months designing these things with 30 people. So they don't actually get to that goal of the values. They might come later. And I've seen a lot of people add them in later. But the neat way that we did it was they were coming up before the projects. Like the values were, you know, we were doing this action hooey before we even got to the specific outcomes. People were starting to talk about how, well, it's not going to work if we don't do this or we don't do it this way. So this Mm -hmm. was quite an exciting project for me because immediately we were getting to the how, which is sometimes a hard place to get to people. So, um, yeah, quite a unique experience. Um, But I guess 
they went through their own journey as well. I remember they were heavily worded and some of them doubled up. And so they, you know, it was quite neat to see them go through four or five different iterations to get to where we are now. And I think they're really clear now. And I find us referring to them a lot. Yeah. So I guess what kept coming up the most was that we wanted to be grounded, like whatever we do, it would be grounded in people, place and culture. And then what does that actually mean? And I guess it was about whatever we do is for Northland, which is the place, culture, which is what makes Northland special and the people, um, which you really can't separate from the place and the culture. But what is it that the people of Northland need and want? And so it's grounding it back to that all the time, to the people of Northland, to the place itself and to the culture and the diversity that Northland has. So that was just kind of an underlying you know, bar kind of that we put in the logic model to remind us that that's what this is all grounded in and what it's for. And it seems like kind of a vague thing, but it's actually really useful to just have that there. I I find my eye going to it a lot when we're Mm. using this this logic model. But the actual values that are on top of that um, was, of course, you know, collaboration or being collaborative. And this is just basically the the fundamental thing about this. We are collaboration, Mm -hmm. so different sectors working together um, really multiplies the power and the rate of change. We believe that. um, And we need to always remember, you know, what happens if in a year we turn around and we've just got like dairy and Horton sheep and beef there? then we've Mm. let one of our values go and we're not going to be as effective and we're not really how we started out. So it's just always going back to that, having different sectors working together. The second one is being future focused. And and that means keeping the future needs at the forefront. So it's so easy to come back to the present and just start thinking about the present problems and those short term fixes, because we're all so tired and you, you, you do worry about what's happening that season, particularly in the primary industries. But what a lot of participants were saying was, I want us to be thinking two years, five years, 20 years ahead and and figuring out how to offset our risks instead of just getting there and then kind of living hand to mouth in five years. So that was a really important one for us, the future focused. Um, The other one that was neat that came up in a number of different ways, and we landed on this wording in the end was authentic. So acting from curiosity instead of expectations so that we're actually really bringing ourselves to the table. So if we put expectations on everybody else there and the project, I mean, expectations can be good. Um, but that's when you start to get people kind of shutting down and connections shutting down. So it was, mm. we just want to always approach things with just to be curious about where the process is going to take us. The fourth one was um, ended up being called self-determining. It's basically making sure that external parties can't determine what we do or allow so that we can just be unwavering in our purpose. So, you know, we are grounded in people, place and culture. We have three things we want to create, um, which is, you know, fulfilling workplaces, a brand of excellence, um, and really high optimization of land use. So we don't want um, to be dependent on external parties that can pull us away from that. And then um, diverse, uh, which is different than collaborative. So collaborative is being very specific about having different sectors um, working together. But diverse is actually creating like a space where we can slow down and actually find our commonalities and constantly do that um, because that's where the gold came from. So this is just a reminder that, yeah, we can do all the stuff, but we've got to do it in this way. You know, we've seen members of the governance group of CTT actually hold people to account yeah. I guess on on meeting these these values, which I think is how you know that something is successful is when you can, you know, when when you can, we put words out and then you hear those words coming back to you, and they're quite simple, right? Like they're one or two words, yeah. super easy to understand. We see this a lot in Taitokido. Lots of things want to come in with hutia or good intentions, and they want to fix something. Um, but the inevitability is is that it's always on a sh- short term basis, and once that's pulled out, um, there there's a hole left. So, what the one that's really important for me, especially, is that self determining one. Is that no matter what happens or who comes into our region, is that we have a consistency of support, a consistency of voice that will come through from CTT. So yeah, like we are using them all the time, which is really encouraging. Yeah, it is. So overall, what we're what we are setting out, what we have set out to do, uh, is a lot of work, uh, which yep. is exciting. 
slightly overwhelming. Um, but the other part that's so special about CTT is that it's all being designed and led by people with skin in the game. And yep. what that means is, is that not everyone's going to be able to contribute equally all the time. So another kind of aha moment that we had during during our kind of design was what model are we actually going to to use or create to actually run CTT and deliver like the practical next steps, driving force to to gain momentum and deliver things. How are we going to do that? when we want to be self-determining, we want to be led by people with skin in the game. Um, and we know that the number one reason why things can peter out is because people are incredibly time poor and it ends up being the same few people doing the work. And the nature of the beast is that all our sectors are seasonally busy with different peaks and troughs of seasonality so finding a model that kind of brings that all together and still allows us to deliver what we need to do to gain momentum um is is a is a particularly tricky problem so there's a lot of passion in the room and there's a lot of belief that we can do this but not a lot of time and so i guess when someone said, and I can't remember, but someone said, hey, listen, like I could do something for three or four months, but I couldn't commit to something to a year. And that's when it was like, aha, we've mm -hmm. got it. And we got up on the whiteboard and we started drawing stuff. And we said, what if we had something where a certain percentage, and I can't remember what it is exactly, but a certain percentage of the work done is in kind by the producers. They're not expecting to be paid, but they know that there's a you know, in end game. So uh, I guess it's two things. They can pick the things that fit their skills and their passions. And so when the next step comes up towards creating perhaps like the great, the suite of great stories or the integrated platform, they go, oh, here's where I think I could contribute. And they can understand that there's a small window. They're not just going to keep getting pulled into things for the next year or two. And and so I think people kind of got excited about having these little bits of work that they could do. But I guess there's another layer of that, which is we are going to need funding um, and from other parties, from external parties. Um, but here's a way of showing that we are offering um, to do some of the work. So it's like everybody involved is contributing to the funding through in-kind work um, and, and having been out there um for the last 15 years in the primary industries, getting funding for things. I know that that is where people get interested when they see that, you know, for lack of a better word, here we are again, collaborating on even the funding. But yeah, that was so exciting. And I haven't really seen it done before like that. I mean, I'm sure somebody out there is doing it, but it's a real new model to me. And probably what I'm most excited about is seeing how we can do this new kind of funding relay. Yeah. So, so basically for people listening, how it works is that each quarter, CTT will create and agree on the things, the products and the actions that we want to deliver in the next three months. That quarterly action plan gets written up and the skills required to deliver bespoke parts of it get articulated as well as the timing that we estimate that it will require. Basically, people self-identify, yep, I have the skills and right now I have the time for the next, you know, two or three months to really smash that out and do a great job at it with the support of the project management team and the governance group as well. Um, we kind of wrap around people, help things to get delivered and then come back again at the next quarterly uh, producer hoodie and talk about how it went, reset the bar figure out what the next steps are, you know, being guided by our lot, uh, macro strategy logic model. And, you know, this is how we balance seasonal, time poor, but well-intentioned and passionate people with delivery of something in region that is by people with skin in the game for the good of our region in a self-determining way, I guess, is kind of how I would explain it. Is that how you see it as well, Dana? Yeah, absolutely. And I don't think we're talking about a large amount of people either. Like if you just had 
I mean, I, some quarters it might be two or three people, one quarter it might be six or seven, but you know, each quarter will be different and, and we'll once again approach each meeting with curiosity, not really knowing until the end of the meeting who it'll be. That's actually quite exciting to me that mm. um, you kind of get this new refreshed plan every three months. So yeah, but that's how I see it as well. Jump in and see the vision and get involved. So yeah, yeah. That's but it will require new people coming in all the time to keep that going. Um, and I've seen it happen really um, successfully in other areas. And I feel like this can really, um, we're already getting like interest to people that we have never talked to before that have heard about it, that want to come to the next producer who, and that's going to be the key. Just yeah. two or three new, really passionate people every couple months um, is, is, is all we need. And this thing will just fly. To, the producers and business owners and operators, people with skin in the game in our region who are kind of sitting on the fence about signing up and getting involved, what would you say to them? Well, I guess just come along to a producer who don't look at it as signing up, just take one step. And that's come to the producer who see these things that we're doing. Um, I think you'll feel the passion. You'll get excited. I mean, think about having, you know, great fulfilling workplaces and an awesome brand that's bringing more demand in and a way of optimizing land use. Like that's exciting stuff. And, and people, we're going to figure it out, but, but this group's probably had the best chance of anything I've seen. So it's like, don't look at it as signing up, just come along. Long, and then you might see a place where you can contribute that excites you and then put your hand up. And if you don't, it might be at another stage. So I think like one step at a time is okay. Yeah. That's how I look and at it. And like the door is always open. So always like we, open. Yeah. you know, it's not a step. sign up for life thing. It's a just <laughs> let's keep people coming through that revolving door and let's let it be what it's going to be. Um, but we need people coming through that door. Well, thank you so much, Dana, for taking the time to sit down and have this chat and sharing your journey and views on collaboration Tai Tokido. Uh, we hope that this conversation inspires others to find out more about us, uh, walk through the doors, take the first step and get involved. For more information on collaboration Tai Tokido, you and how to get involved, please visit collaborationtt.nz Thank you very much for listening. Te Northland. Ooh, papa. Collaboration. <laughs> <laughs>